and the Bible speaks of the blessed hope that we're going to be taken out of here before this stuff happens. The other thing is the Bible talks that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And if the church is the saints and the Bible says no weapon fashioned against us will stand, then you'd have to say there's a contradiction because then in Revelation, singular, mm-hmm. in the, those chapters, it says that the beast will overcome the saints. Well, there's the saints in our time period who believe now in this age of grace. Yeah. And there will be the saints that will willingly give their heads. Uh, they will be persecuted and executed for the witness of the Lamb. And we see a in, I believe it's chapter seven, I say they cried out to the Lord, oh, faithful and true, how long till you avenge us? And he says, I saw those that were beheaded for the witness of the lamb under the altar. Yeah. So, and the Lord replies, hey, you know, hang out for a while. Uh, there's still more of you to join you. Uh, so there's not a contradiction. And then with the Holy Spirit, if we're the containers of the Holy Spirit, and later on in Thessalonians, I believe it says, that he who now lets will let until he be removed, and then that wicked one shall appear. Well, who's the wicked one? The Antichrist. He can't show up on the scene until we, the church, are removed. That's right. And it says in verse 3 of Second Thessalonians chapter 2, Let no one deceive you by any means for the day, that's the day of the Lord, that's the second coming of Christ. The rapture isn't the second coming, correct? No. The, the second there's a difference coming, there's there's there are apples and oranges yeah so we the the rapture is also called in greek to harpazo as someone pointed out in one of the comments and thank you in the latin vulgate the word rapturios is there for the rapture in the english bible it's not but greek it's called the harpazo the great snatch so jesus will come in the air to catch us up in the air so the dead in christ shall rise first we are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air to meet him in the clouds. And to me, it's, as we may have mentioned before, Jesus is showing Satan, who's called the prince of the power of the air, that, you know what? You have no control. You have no power. Here's all the raptured saints. And then he's going to take us away to uh, wherever the, the Bema Seat judgment is. And then the great wedding supper of the Lamb. And that's during that seven-year tribulation period. The Holy Spirit, when we get removed, there's 144,000 Jews, male Jewish virgins, not defiled by women, the scripture says, that will be evangelists to the world. And then there's the two witnesses that people either think it's Moses and Elijah or Enoch and Elijah or Moses and Enoch. Mm -hmm. Wherever they are, they share uh, for the first three and a half years and then finally, at that midpoint of the tribulation, the beast is given power to the to kill these two guys. And then the Bible says their bodies will lie dead in the streets for three days and the whole world will see it. Yeah. You hear about Isaac Newton? You know who Sir Isaac Newton is? Was? He, yeah. Most people know him for what? Um, he came up with the theory of gravity, right? He had the apple hit him in the head. The law of gravity? The law of gravity. Well, Sir Isaac Newton actually wrote in the late 1500s, early 1600s, he wrote more in Bible prophecy than on physics. And he concluded that man someday would travel faster than 35 miles an hour. You go like, because back then they figure if man went faster than 20, he'd fall apart. Hmm. How fast did you drive yesterday? (laughs) So he figured out they knew they had the Dutch in the Portuguese and Spanish uh, Navy guys circumventing the globe uh, back then. So they knew the circumference of the earth. And Sir Isaac Newton concluded that if you were on the other side of the planet and you traveled at least 35 miles an hour, you go from the other side of the world to Israel and view the two witnesses lying dead in the street by the third day. Of course, now you can hop on an airplane and be there in about 20 hours, including layovers and transfers. Yeah. But Sir Isaac Newton didn't know about television, did he? No. So now you can go to YouTube and type in the Western Wall and see a live view Mm. all of the Western Wall, but places in the world like Venice or London or Paris uh, due to technology. You know, here we are. We got 222 subscribers, you said now? 222. 
on YouTube. Wherever you're at, you could be somewhere on the other side of the world watching us. That's right. So thank you. But it's just technology. We're going to see this stuff happen. We're digressing. Get us back on track here. So the day, the, the day of the Lord is the second coming of Christ. This is going to happen after the tribulation. The tribulation, the market, you know what's going to start the tribulation is the peace treaty. There's going to be peace right now in the world, all over the Middle East, all over the world. We people are crying out for peace, peace, peace. We think we're in the last of the last days because of we just look at the news now. You know, we're in we're, the Red Sea, the United States, Great Britain, um, Iran. We're in the, the Red Sea area, the Middle East. Israel's at war with Gaza. They're winning now. They're talking about Hezbollah going to Lebanon. It's like the war is not coming to an end. And many um, scholars I'm hearing and, um, and pastors are saying this may be the war, Israel war, that may lead us to Ezekiel 38. That prophecy that we're still waiting for it to be fulfilled. So that's what they're saying. We're close, guys. So the marking part, part of the tribulation is the peace treaty that's going to be signed by this man of lawlessness, the Antichrist. He's going to be a powerful world leader and bring everybody together. He's going to be brilliant, a brilliant speaker. He knows how to persuade, just like Satan. <laughs> he knows how to persuade people. He's going to win their hearts, and he's going to sign a peace treaty. And for, for, for the first three and a half years of the seven-year tribulation, it's going to be peace on earth, right? You find that in the book of Daniel. Yes. And as Terry said, let, let's say, you know, for you scoffers out there that, <laughs> let's just let's just say the rapture is real we know it is we believe it is but what would happen if you suddenly woke up you know let's say you're asleep and you wake up and your your phone's blown up because your friends are calling and and other friends are disappearing there's news there's been car crashes bus crashes train crashes airplanes falling out of the sky uh, power plants uh running amok because people have disappeared all over is that going to get resolved in a day or three? Probably not. No. And one of the scenarios about the end times, in, as Terry mentioned, the book of Ezekiel in chapters 37, 38, is that Gog and Magog, which is to the uttermost north of Israel, and the country that's uttermost north of Israel is Russia. And what's Russia doing today? They're in the Ukraine cleaning up uh, a corrupt administration there. The mess. And, yeah, that's a two-hour conversation. Yeah. So, but <laughs> Russia has had for years military alliance treaties with the Muslim countries. And Ezekiel 37, 38, those Muslim countries are named by their ancient names. Persia and Tagarma. And so hey, more likely, if you think about it, the United States has been the protector of what country for the last 50, 60 years on paper? Israel. It's been Israel. And yet from the George Bush senior administration, his secretary of state Baker coughed up the name of Israeli spies in Muslim countries. And they were all tortured. And uh, James Baker was a four letter word to the Israelis. Uh, we, uh, the Clinton administration uh, forced the uh, Oslo Accords, which was given up land. Uh, I talked with somebody uh, on a trip that, had knowledge that uh, the guy between Netanyahu, I want to say his name was Barack Ehud, but it, that's wrong. It was the, the prime minister of Israel between Netanyahu. And he really, he gave away the farm and Arafat would not accept it. Yeah. And Arafat got up and walked out of the meetings, but they're about to give them everything and the kitchen sink for peace. Mm. I think Hal Lindsey wrote back in the, in the late eighties, early nineties that, the Jews said that if they were, if Satan could promise them peace, they would sign a deal with the devil. Oh, guess what? They're going to.